I found a ballast for an HID headlight in the recycle bin, so I figured I would uh, pick it up and see if it works and uh, open it up and see what's inside. Let's check it out. I found this uh, in the recycle bin at work. I seem to find a lot of stuff thrown into the recycle bin at work. This is a uh, HID ballast for a car HID light and it says NFG. I think we'll uh, take this thing apart and see what's inside it. It's probably going to be full of potting uh, material because I'm sure that this is uh, going to be watertight. But we'll open it up and see whether uh, whether we can see anything inside here. Be nice if I could make this thing work. I uh, have a, a a spare HID bulb. My car came with HID lights of the 6,000 degree Kelvin style and I found that they were too blue. I don't understand why people like such blue lights because I'm not a big fan of the blue lights as I thought. It's fully potted. Hmm. Um, anyway, um, I bought some 4200s for the car and uh, it kept the kept the uh, 6000s as spares and I've done some some stuff with them one of them I turned into a I went and bought a ballast to make one work but the second one I well, I, I think I've showed it off before I I, I I put it into this this was an old halogen lamp I cut the glass cut the base off it when it failed and I stuck the lamp in here as a test lamp be neat if I could make this thing work now this thing says no good on it but you know I usually don't believe what I read on things because sometimes people don't know what they're talking about. It may have been uh, a bad bulb and uh, when the guy bought a new bulb they told him he had to replace his ballast too. So he tossed it. So I'm going to hook this thing up and see whether this thing actually does anything. If it doesn't then I don't think I'm going to be fixing this because I'd have to uh, get all that potting compound out of there. To say these are generally waterproof because they're mounted up under the hood of your car, right? So these units themselves are are waterproof, so they can get wet. But we're going to test this thing and see whether it does anything. So I've got the bulb. We'll plug the bulb in. Even these are watertight connections because the the voltages that these things operate on is ridiculously high to start one of these bulbs um, they use a starting voltage of around 20,000 volts I know ridiculous huh there's the starter that, to kick them and get them going so let's just hook up my power supply to this thing and it should be labeled okay positive and negative it is labeled here so I'll hook up the negative lead and the positive lead. And I'll just turn on the power supply and maybe this thing will work. Wouldn't that be cool if it actually did work? Oh, really? I guess it's not blown up like uh, it says on here. It says no good. But I guess it's not because that lamp struck. This will look cool. I'll turn out the lights in here. Let you guys see how much this thing actually throws out. This is a 35 watt car headlight and this thing gets ridiculously bright and in this reflector it actually does a really good job. This was my first little experiment and I I made a, I made a light using this and then I took the second bulb and I put it into a into a uh, an old 500 watt halogen fixture and I mounted the ballast in that so this one's just been kind of sitting around as a spare. Now I have a use for this Maybe mount this over my workbench because as you can see it uh, throws off a really nice light. I'm going to kill the lights in there and show you guys how much light this thing actually throws off. Okay it's now totally dark in here with the exception of this this light. And as you can see the, the light that it throws off is it's got very intense light. Very strong good color balance light. I'll have to find something to use this for but use a uh, use I will find for sure maybe mounted over my bench as a, a light 
for seeing you know, some of the uh, some of the fine things on on circuitry mounted on a on a on a uh, gooseneck or something. But uh, if I shine it around the the workshop here, it lights everything up quite nicely. It's the only light that's on in the, in the whole shop is this. As you can see, it, uh, it throws a beautiful light, full spectrum. And the neat thing about HID lamps is if I turn it off, it will strike instantly. Unlike a regular metal halide or mercury lamp, which has to cool down. This thing's drawing about 3.5 amps at 12 volts, as you can see. So I don't know what the problem with this was. Maybe it's a CAN bus problem. This is the CAN bus ballast, um, the, the igniter and ballast here. So maybe the problem on the vehicle was that uh, it wasn't communicating with the CAN bus on the car and it wasn't working. But uh, on a conventional power supply, this thing seems to work just fine. Something like this would make a perfect emergency uh, power supply. You know, a 12 volt battery power this up you know, like even a even like a 12 a 7 amp gel cell um, at three and a half amps it's going to run for a couple of hours before the battery gets too weak to run it and I've, I've tested them out before with the other one that I've got uh, I've tested it on a battery and I can typically get on a, on a like a, a 7 amp hour gel cell I can typically get just under two hours of runtime on a full charge before the battery uh, is dead so that's a, that's a use for this. Anyway, so I say, nice little, nice little find uh, to pick out of the recycle bin. Test out old things, see if they still work. Anyway, not much else to show. It's, it's a light bulb. It's a light bulb and a ballast. Here's another thing I found in the recycle bin. An old Cybershot Sony digital camera. We'll be taking a look at this one. This one actually works. It's only a two megapixel, but I, I kid you not, I, I got a kick out of this when I opened this thing up. Are you ready for this? It uses a memory stick. Sixteen megabytes. And when this camera was new, this would be, I, I, I don't know what year this is, maybe it has a date on here. I'm just looking to see if there's a date on this camera. It's a 2 megapixel, so I'm going to say it's probably about 20 years old. We'll be checking this one out on a future video. We'll play around with it and see what type of how the pictures look that it shoots. And Yes, it, it shoots video too, but it shoots video with no sound and I'm, I'm sure that the picture is just wonderful off this thing. But we'll, we'll play around with this thing at, at, on a future video and uh, see how take it apart and see how this thing was built. But I'm gonna I'm gonna guess that this was this was probably around 90, 96, 97 somewhere. I had a Nikon um, nine fifty, and it was a two two point one megapixel, and it was it was around that era. It was around ninety seven, ninety eight, somewhere in there. So I, I I gotta think that this one here is probably in that uh, same time frame. Anyway, that's a future video. Thanks for watching.